So it's been a few weeks now since Microsoft launched their new Xbox platform and Sony launched the PS5 and there's something we're starting to figure out very, very quickly now. And that is, it's very easy to fill up the SSDs inside of these new systems. It's not difficult at all with some of these games like Call of Duty exceeding 100 gigabytes. And then you start going into Game Pass for the Xbox and yeah, you'll, you'll fill up that SSD without any real issue, maybe even in the first day when you get the system. But Microsoft has an interesting advantage on the storage side in that they have an accessory that will expand the storage for the Series X and the Series S and allow you to play next-gen games that expect the speed of an SSD off of it. That, of course, being the storage expansion card, or as I like to call it, Microsoft's new memory card because I hate change. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure you hit the like button, helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna try to, I guess we'll pop it open just to see, cause why not? And then we'll actually put it into the Xbox and see how it is in terms of transferring games back and forth when it comes to speed. So the box itself is pretty straightforward. Seagate, one terabyte, and then there's the memory card there. They're calling it a storage expansion card for Xbox Series X and S. I guess, I mean, I just call it a memory card, like I said, and you know what, they should have stuck with memory card because that sounds better. They have the Velocity Architecture logo here. Remember, this will allow you to play your next generation games off of it because it will provide the same speed that the internal SSD has, which means that the next gen games from third party publishers, all of this, won't have any issues when it comes to loading or any of that. Something they would run into going through USB on the back of it. Uh, full speed add-on storage exclusively for the Xbox Series X and S. Again, not a lot of information really needed here. And we just kind of slide this up and there is our card that is worth apparently $220. Now I do know NVMe drives tend to be kind of expensive. One terabyte, all of this. I get it, but hopefully pricing will uh, get a bit better for a card like this. The only issue now is there's only one on the market, that being from Seagate, and we've heard talks of more manufacturers getting into the mix here, which should lower pricing, but as of now, we're waiting for Sony to talk about their NVMe expandable storage on the PlayStation 5 that will allow us to kind of choose our own NVMe drives, which should mean anyway that we'll have comparable or even better pricing as that market continues to have more and more of them released. So here's hoping that Microsoft has plans to work with other companies, I don't know, like Toshiba or Western Digital or just hopefully a ton so that these start to drop down in price very quickly. I think it's just hard for people to look at this and say, really, that's worth over $200, especially when you get, like I said, the parents into the store and all of this, they'll kind of look a bit sideways at this and be kind of confused as to why something so small is so expensive. I mean, really, it's border, it's bordering on the price of the Xbox Series S, if you think about it. Otherwise, there's not much in here other than some information from Seagate. Uh, I guess there's instructions on I, the only thing I think of is how to insert it. Yep, that's it. There's a couple of pictures, how to take off a little guard, and then how to plug it in to your Xbox, and then a little green check mark saying you did good. Quick initial impressions of the memory card itself. It has some weight to it. It's not light, and that makes sense because it's supposed to be metal on the outside where it's gonna be pulling heat off of the chip inside in the controller, but like if I drop it, like it, it does have some weight to it. It doesn't feel cheap, basically. Yes, this is, I think, like a plastic here, but then this is all metal, it has the Seagate logo, logo right there, and then on the back, we have a ton of information from FCC and all of this. We also have a marking here for one terabyte, which makes me very hopeful that down the road, this will eventually say two terabytes or maybe four terabytes, or who knows, maybe they go backwards and they get a very cheap one out and it says 512 gigabytes. There are, I'm sure, a lot of ways they could go with it. So the idea here with Microsoft's memory card, the reason they went with this design is that it, I guess it was just easier for the end user to be able to pop the card in or remove it. It's supposed to be hot swappable as well. So while the system is on, you can pop this out and remove it. And I assume that's meant to be done in the dashboard and not when you're actually, you know, playing the game off of this, but it's really just supposed to be for more ease of use. So it only slots in one way, kind of has like a guide on the side here, and it looks like it just clicks right in. It has like this little bit of resistance right at the end when you're pushing it in. So you get like this nice little click just to let you know it's in all the way. It's also in there well enough. Like it's not loose, but just a little bit of force and it will pop out. But it's at least 
sturdy enough to where I, I don't, I feel like it's not gonna come out even if like you turn it upside down or something. It's in there pretty well. So you know me, I am interested in taking a look inside of this little memory card from Seagate and Microsoft. And we sort of went over this a bit when Jeff Grubb did this and took some pictures of the inside. But I, again, I'm just interested to see what's inside this one. So it does look like the plastic sides here unclip. And I should be able to do that over here. And this plastic guard should come off. And I believe if I remember right from the images, the metal pieces then come apart. All right, so there is that. And yeah, this is just kind of clipped together. It's It should just shut right back like that when I go to put it back together. Not a big deal there. And then we have our metal piece that looks like it's just kind of clamped together here. And I think if I just run a spudger or this guy around the edge, I should be able to kind of move this apart. If I remember right, this is mostly being held together with like a thermal padding on the other side. Now that we have that plastic off, this just kind of lifts apart here. It has some like glue at the top. They're almost like a little sticker right here. We have a big thermal pad and we had talked about this previously. This is just transferring heat to the edge. And remember, this is making contact inside of the Series X to its chassis, and that way it can transfer the heat over. We had talked about this getting kind of warm, and that does make some sense based on what I'm seeing here. Specifically, I think if you pop this out while it's while it's while the system's on, what you'll probably find is that this part right here is kind of toasty because that is how it's transferring the heat off of the, the chip inside and the controller. Anyway, we do have four screws right here all the way around the edges that the Thermal pad was covering up slightly, at which time this board should just be free. And there we go, some more thermal pad on the other side here. And then we have two chips, our flash memory, and then we should have our controller down here. Looks like they used some thermal compound to kind of connect it to the edge here so that this all will of course dissipate heat. And there we can see our Fison E19 controller. It is PCIe 4.0, capable of 3.75 gigabytes per second read and write. It's using a CF Express, I believe, slot here so it can communicate with the Xbox. And this falls in line with the speeds that Microsoft is looking for currently. I believe we're like 2.4 gigabytes per second. This well exceeds that. So yeah, the, the memory card here, as expected based on what we saw from Jeff Grubb and his images, is more than capable to run these next generation games as it has more speed than what's really needed technically. It's also worth pointing out that the E19 from Fison maxes out at two terabytes. So as of now, we might get a two terabyte card for this brand from like Seagate if they continue to use this E19. But my hope is that other manufacturers come in, maybe they use a different controller, maybe Microsoft kind of green lights that throughout the generation. And we get to a point where you can buy like a four terabyte card if you'd like and probably spend the same price as what a Series X costs. Also a big congratulations to the Fison controller and the flash memory inside of this particular memory card because it's getting a nice upgrade to MX4. No other reason than because I broke the seal and cleared some of the stock compound off to take a look at it. I, I don't think this is gonna like improve performance or anything like that. Seemed to transfer heat pretty well before this. Also putting this back together doesn't seem so bad. I just put the four screws back in with that board kind of face down. This just sort of locks back into the place and has that kind of that glue and sticker on the other side. And then it looks like this will just kind of wrap around top of it and it should be good to go. All right, and there we go. We have it back together for the most part. A little loose up here, I will say around the plastic, but it's all back together. It pops into the Xbox just fine. So now let's go try it out. So to try to get a gauge for the speed of the expansion card, I picked out three different external storage options for the Xbox Series X. We have the expansion card, we have an external mechanical hard drive that a lot of people may have right now laying around or that they were just using on their Xbox One. And then I also have an enclosure with an SSD, which is an Evo 860 already installed inside running through USB 3.1. We'll start with the fastest option, which was clearly the expansion card. I used Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is almost 50 gigabytes in size. And to move it from the internal storage over to the expansion card, it was a little over a minute. And then to then bring it back from the expansion card over to the internal storage, it was just under two minutes. So it took a little longer to actually pull it back from the card to the system. The next fastest option would be an SSD installed inside of an enclosure for USB 3.1. It managed to take a Sass Creed Valhalla, move it from the internal storage 
over to that SSD in about three and a half minutes and then reading it back to the system's internal storage was about a minute faster. And as expected, the slowest option for transferring games back and forth would be the mechanical hard drive running through USB 3.1. That took about eight and a half minutes to move Assassin's Creed Valhalla over to that drive and then to read it back, it was just under eight minutes. Now remember the big advantage here for that expansion card is that you can play games directly off of it for the Series X and the Series S. The other options, for example, the SSD through an external enclosure, you still will have to move games back and forth. However, that's pretty good in terms of speed overall at about half the price total of the expansion card. Even so, the expansion card does have a pretty good advantage there, and it is the fastest option when it comes to transferring games back and forth. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for the expansion card from Microsoft and Seagate. It's built well, and it does what it's supposed to do. Next-gen games play fine off here, and transfer speeds are very, very fast, but it is also $220, and that is something that will always be brought up, at least for now, with this. But right now, for next-gen games and next-gen systems, this is like the one way to expand your storage and actually play games off of it. We're still waiting for Sony to tell us about the NVMe drives right now, and. Hopefully Microsoft partners with some other companies so we can get some competition in the market for these little memory cards and have the price kind of drive down for them. But if you're just wondering, is it built well? Does it work? Can I just buy this and add one terabyte to it and not have to think about transferring stuff back and forth from a hard drive? Yeah, it works great. It's just, again, $220. You'll have to decide if that's worth it for you. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.